Environmental management. It's a process of managing risk uh, within a company's daily activities. It's, it's, it can be very broad. It's something that covers all industry streams from manufacturing, construction, infrastructure, health, transportation, food, tourism. You think about almost any industry it has got, that has got an environmental impact, which is almost all. Um, there is a requirement for someone to manage the environment within there. Um, and a, environmental management doesn't just isolate itself to what goes on within that company. It moves well outside that company. And, and these days, companies have to be very aware of what their, um, their suppliers uh, are doing and how they're processing and what they're doing and looking at what their, uh, their consumers are doing with their products or their, or their services and, and things. Uh, stakeholders, communities, um, regulators, the government, um, you and me, we are all becoming more and more aware of what impacts uh, we have on the environment and, um, and it's, it's something that we've got to manage through everything that we do. Environmental managers they cover a very broad, broad spectrum of uh, roles and responsibilities. Ultimately, they're responsible for the development and the implementation of plans and activities that, um, that occur within an organisation uh, to minimise, to avoid, to manage the impacts uh, that that company may go about um, imposing upon the environment. Uh, environmental managers don't necessarily do those activities, they aren't necessarily the people who are going to be preventing uh, or, or, or doing the activities such as digging the holes or building the things or, um, or placing the, the, the things within companies, but they are going to be the people who set up those systems and integrate management into the daily processes of that company. Um, environmental managers, they, they have to have a very solid understanding of what goes on within that company and how that company actually processes and, and what they're doing, you know, whether, they, whether they're manufacturing, whether they're providing services, whether they are uh, constructing or doing, um, uh, providing goods to, to entities, that they, they need to understand those processes intricately so they can look at improvements, look at um, avoiding certain activities to uh, minimise or um, manage those risks. For example, looking at reducing noise um, which may be created, looking at minimising waste, avoiding wastes, looking at um, managing, reducing energy consumption with organisations. All of those sorts of processes are things that environmental managers need to be aware of and they need to be able to incorporate those systems within the daily activities that that company undertakes. They also have to work really closely with other groups uh, within the company to ensure that company meets its environmental objectives. And that's not always an easy process because the mandate of, uh, of different groups within a company, for example, a construction manager, he's out to save time and, uh, and, and money to do things in the fastest and cheapest way he can. The environmental manager has a different focus. And, and so there needs to be a very close relationship between those different groups uh, within the company uh, to avoid headlock um, in those processes to, and to make sure that a win-win result is achieved each time. So what is an environmental management system? An environmental management system, and this is defined within the, the ISO 14001 document itself, it's a tool for managing impacts of an organisation's activities on the environment. It provides a structured approach to planning and implementing environmental protection measures. Now what does that mean? Um, what's a tool? An environmental management system, it's normally, it's normally present as a series of documents and in the more developed systems it becomes a, an interactive web interface where, where you can go on and if you've got a task to do, if you have to go and take a water sample or if, it's, uh, if you need to go and mix a solution that has to go into the treatment of timber for example or if you have to um, install a, um, 
causeway under a, under a road uh, and that sort of a thing. It's a system that tells you how to do those sorts of things and, and provides that framework so that you don't go about doing that process and cause greater environmental risks uh, or impacts, sorry, that you would normally, uh, that you would otherwise have caused. Um, an environmental management system monitors environmental performance and um, similar to the way in which you know, a financial management system monitors expenditure and income and enables regular checks for a company, uh, company's financial performance, an EMS integrates the environmental management into a daily, uh, the company's daily operations, the long-term planning and other quality management systems. Environmental management systems don't even have to exist within a separate environmental document they can be integrated right through the, the organisation's procedures on how to go about doing their day-to-day -day activities. Um, and the ultimate goal is that people are going to, uh, they only want one, one, one source, one source to go to, to, uh, to get that information. So if, if you want to go and yeah, go and ex excavate a, a, an area and pour a concrete slab, you don't want to have to go and find the, the the details on how to do that and then go and get the environmental management procedures for that as well. Those environmental management procedures need to be incorporated into that process so that when you go about doing that job, you've got that information all there. And it provides you with the measures that can be monitored and, um, and, and watched to make sure that you're getting the, uh, the performance out of the activity that you need or that the company needs. The company's going to set objectives and that's something that I'll go and, and, and work with you and we'll work on how to set those objectives and write those objectives. Um, but the performance of the environmental management of a company needs to be something that can be presented and, and regularly monitored um, to, to ensure that those, those company objectives and goals are met. There are many reasons to implement an environmental management system. They provide a lot of advantages to a company. I can run through several of them at the moment. Uh, they reduce environmental impact by preventing and mitigating adverse impacts. Um, impacts that are imposed by the company. For example, if we were to go ahead and develop a site and push some trees over, dig a hole and lay a concrete slab, um, we would need to manage those impacts of, um, of pushing those trees over with the, uh, the creatures that might live in those trees. We'd have to manage the, the impacts of, um, of when we turn the soil, making sure the soil wouldn't erode and, and wash away. We'd need to manage all of those things in pouring a con concrete slab. Um, what we do with, uh, uh, when we clean out concrete trucks and what we do with that slurry and, and that sort of stuff that's left behind. We need to manage those sort of things. Secondly, they mitigate impacts of adverse environmental conditions on a company. If that company is in an area of high rainfall um, or of um, intense heat, um, so uh, environmental management systems set in place uh, systems to protect the company against those, um, those conditions. Um, thirdly, they look at ensuring compliance with obligations. Um, to go ahead and operate, many companies require licenses um, and so we need to be making sure as an environmental manager, making sure that we are meeting those obligations because if we don't, we'll end up being shut down or we'll be subject to large fines. We can also be subject to um, very serious public scrutiny. Um, it's becoming more and more a, a top priority within organisations to, to manage your compliance, the financial implications alone are huge. Um, four, enhancing environmental performance. We want to be able to, we want to be able to not only do the things well, but we need to be able to show people that we are doing them well. Um, it's one thing to go out and um, and go through doing things effect uh, effectively, um, and minimising environmental risk. However, if you are monitoring that process. And, and looking at um, ways of um, being able to take that performance um, and, and present it 
um, then that can be that can be presented to management. It can be presented to st um, stakeholders and shareholders and those sorts of people. Increasing knowledge within those those um, groups of people can then either provide provide you or the company with further further support to continue the good work that you've been doing, um, uh, and it also can help just create general awareness, increase that culture within all the organisation, which is often a big battle for environmental managers. Um, it that that in, to be able to enhance and capture and present that environmental performance is a is a really really important skill to try and acquire. Taking responsibility for the life cycle of a pro of a product or service. Um, one thing that's becoming more and more prevalent within our, our workplace is that we're not just responsible for what's going on within our entity, within our company. We have to take responsibility for what's going on outside it as well. Who's supplying us with those, those products and how do they go about creating those things that they're providing us? Are they doing it in an environmentally friendly or environmentally responsible way? Um, we don't want to be simply purchasing that cheaper timber over there um, because it's cheaper. Um, meanwhile, it's being cut out of Indonesian forests or Brazilian forests or, or wherever. We want to make sure that those products that are being supplied are coming to us in an environmentally responsible manner. And likewise, with our what goes from our company, we need to make, make sure that it's going to uh, an environmentally res responsible destination. For example, if one of our waste streams is tyres, we need to make sure that those people disposing of those tyres are doing it in an environmentally responsible manner. Um, increasing our organisation's market position and um, and that, that goes about through communication, it goes about through being able to um, get that performance um, measures that I spoke of before, being able to get those and present those to the people who are interested, the stakeholders, um, um, with it be it the community, be it within a, a share market, be it within um, the regulator, all of those areas, we need to be able to get our performance and, um, and increase our, our market position. Uh, people who are purchasing our product or our service want to know that what we are doing is responsible um, and, and an environmental management system is a way of being able to present that. And number seven, um, to be able to communicate environmental information to employees, um, to management, and also to stakeholders um, and, and people outside our community. So um, again, um, this, this system might be a series of documents, it might be a website which um, employees can go in and find out information so that they can go about doing their job in a responsible manner. Um, it might be providing information to management so they can make wiser and more educated decisions. Um, and for stakeholders generally, it might be for the community that's around us to, so, so they feel more comfortable with what we're doing uh, where we are.